welcome back to the channel. It's a Lit Life with Miranda Reads, and today I want to do a little bit of a life update plus the five books that really influenced my graduate career. So something I've mentioned a little bit on my channel is that I'm a graduate student. Specifically, I am going for my PhD in biophysics and I'm hoping to graduate sometime in the summer, pandemic willing. And I think to begin this influential book, we have to go back a bit. Specifically, the fall of 2014, I was finishing up my bachelor's degree in biochemistry and I was starting to apply for graduate school. And I just remember feeling like these intense waves of anxiety of like, am I really doing this? Should I do this? What is science like outside of a classroom? And I remember reading a handful of books that really helped push me to applying for graduate school. And there was one in particular that I is just like seared in my memory. And when I say the title, I feel like you're going to understand why. It is stiff. The Curious Lives of Human Cadavers by Mary Roach. This book literally just chronicles the author as she tries to find out what happens to the body after the occupant has passed. It was disgusting and I loved it. Lots of scientific studies on decomposition, there's autopsy how-tos, there's anatomy classes, there's just so many things that bodies can do once you're not inside them anymore. Once you get over like kind of like the shock value of this, you realize that Mary Roach has this like super approachable way of writing it. And then also she like is really funny <laughs> about such a serious and grisly topic. And it actually ended up kindling my excitement for field research and the specific techniques that you use to study things that people just don't know about yet. I ultimately applied for degrees not in the forensics field because I've seen way too many horror movies. I don't think I can actually handle working with bodies. However, the wide-eyed curiosity of Mary Roach and then just the excitement she had about the science and learning about the secret techniques used to discover these things, it just excited me and it kind of helped influence and push me to applying for my PhD. After I graduated with my degree in biochemistry, the next big step was to actually go to grad school. Coming up on fall of 2015, I had officially joined my university and then I had the big three things to complete. Academics, choosing a lab, and beginning your thesis project. For academics, you take a handful of really highly advanced classes closely related to your major, and then do your best to pass. Note I say pass, not ace. All throughout high school and undergrad, I had this mentality that I had to be the best. I had to get the best grades, I had to get straight A's, which I pretty much succeeded. I think I got like one or two A-Bs in college. A lot of my time and energy was focused on getting the best grades possible. However, when you're in graduate school, they only care that at the end of your PhD that you have a PhD. While this was something that was explained to me over and over and over, it took me like about a year to, for it really to sink in. And I remember reading a book that kind of helped me get through this, a couple of books actually. And these are Bill Bryson's uh, Short History of Nearly Everything and At Home, I think the second one is called. But essentially, A Short History of Nearly Everything, Bill Bryson breaks down the entire history of the universe in just over 500 pages. And he goes from the Big Bang all the way to the end of the universe. And then at home, he takes every single thing that you have in your home, like your walls, your doors, your windows, your cutlery, the spices on your table, and then also talks about the origin. I feel like these books ended up helping me a lot for graduate school because it taught me that I needed to take a step back and look at the picture on a whole. Does it matter that I get straight A's in every single class? No. <laughs> What's actually more important than the classes is your lab and your research. So a lab will have a professor that leads it, a few graduate students, maybe a postdoc, so someone who already has their PhD and is working in the lab, as well as a few undergraduates who also work in the lab. And as a graduate student, you're gonna spend most of your time in your lab, completing your own research projects, working on someone else's research project, and learning new techniques. And that's actually where the core of the knowledge from a PhD comes from. It's that firsthand experience, learning how to think through problems and discovering new things. So before you commit 
the next four to seven years of your life to a lab, you will typically rotate. And rotate just means that you try out a lab for about three to five weeks, depending on your program. And then you try another one and then normally a third one. And after you pick your lab, you start setting up your thesis project. For me, I study chaperone proteins and how they affect protein folding. More on that later. Now, once you've done the first three, which is finish up whatever classes your graduate degree requires, pick your lab and get a firm start on your thesis project, then comes your preliminary exams. The exam varies a lot from program to program, but for me, I had to first pick a committee, so that means five professors who will decide ultimately whether or not I get a PhD. And then from there, I had a five question take home exam, which doesn't sound bad until you realize each question had parts A through E. I think my final response was close to like 25 to 30 pages, single space by the way. So it was, it was wild. And then the last bit is that you have to do a presentation that talks about your thesis project, what you've done so far and your plans for the future. If you fail this exam, a lot of programs will give you like a one chance to redo it, but some programs will just kick you. I still remember just how stressed I was to take this preliminary exam to the point like I was almost like paralyzed with like, what do I do? if I fail this, like I would be a failure. I couldn't do anything with my life. I'd be just screwed. And then I read a book called Chemistry by Waiki Wing, and I immediately identified with the main character so much. The main character is going for her PhD in the sciences, and at that time, she is at a crossroads. She's experiencing burnout, depression. She just does not want to be there anymore. The politics of the lab, dealing with her lab mates, her parents, her boyfriend, it all becomes too much and she just walks away. <laughs> and I, it made me realize that like, even if I were to feel this super tough, super stressful exam, I could walk away. <laughs> like I wasn't married to this PhD. It wasn't my entire life and that there is things outside of it that I could do. And I know like even looking back, like I can't quite understand like how I just got myself so worked up on this exam, but that book helped me come out of it. It helped me focus a lot on like being happy and making sure that I was in a good place mentally, opposed to just hyper focusing on something that ultimately caused me more problems than what I had ever anticipated. Also, like looking back, I, it, it was a terrifying exam, but at the same time, like it wasn't as terrible as I made it out to be. So spoiler, um, I passed. <laughs> and then the next step I had was to be a dissertator. So dissertator means that all you have to do is finish up your project slash projects and then publish papers and defend your thesis in front of the same committee members, normally about two to three years later. And if you're ever, if you're curious for my research, I study proteins. You can think of proteins on a human body as teeny tiny molecular machines. Each one of them has a job, whether it be transferring oxygen from your lungs to your blood, digesting your food, helping maintain your heartbeat. There is literally a job for every single protein in your body. And I study something called a chaperone protein. So like much like how you have a bunch of kids, you take them to the zoo, and if you don't have a chaperone, they're just gonna go wild. That's your body with the proteins that do all those jobs. They need a chaperone that helps repair them if they're broken, helps like pick them apart if they get tangled, all that kind of stuff. So I studied that for like the next few years and then the pandemic hit and it turns out the fact that I couldn't go in the building, I couldn't work on the instruments, I couldn't order supplies. Everything that I needed for graduation was just falling apart. And I just felt, ended up feeling very apathetic. And then I read a couple of books that helped like rekindle the joy that I used to feel. It ended up being two books by Robin Wall Kimmerer. She's a professor of environmental and forest biology in a New York college. And she has one book called Braiding Sweetgrass. So for Braiding Sweetgrass, that one took things that the professor discovered as a scientist and overlapped it with the cultural knowledge of the Native American people that she belongs to. I think it's Potawatomi. I'm like 90% sure on that. And what I loved about that is just the way science 
and traditions overlap. And that isn't something that you typically see. When you learn about science, you always are told to be objective, test your results, and never let human emotions influence things. And in her book, she has a lot of that influence. And to me, that was really cool to see a more human side of science. And then her other book, Gathering Moss, takes a peek at like the tiniest, tiniest plants in our existence and talks all about just the really cool facts about them, which is like, how do they gather water? Why are there so many patterns? How many types are there? How can you grow moss? I know it sounds weird and I know it sounds like a little bit out there, but I loved it. So after I read those books, I started to think about, okay, so what can I do? I mean, I can't, obviously I still can't get into the lab with any sort of regularity. And I have to think of something that I can pivot my project to so that way I am still learning and still contributing and I still will have a degree at the end of the day. And what I came up with was simulations. So instead of doing these experiments hands on, I was going to use a computer program and simulate what would happen when my chaperone protein goes through different scenarios and how would it interact with the little proteins like the molecular machines I was talking about. So now I'm at the tail end of this simulation project. So it's all brand new stuff, all brand new techniques. I feel like I've mastered it pretty well and I've got some pretty interesting results, which I'm excited about. Now all I have to do is write it up as my first author paper, submit that, and then also write up my thesis. So I'm looking at a graduation of possibly two to three months. It kind of depends on how long it takes to write things up and make things look pretty, but I'm really excited about that. And as a treat to myself, I decided to reread one of my absolute favorite books and this is a science book, but it's also not like a scientist. Well, like a little bit of a scientist. And in this one, we follow Kaya. She was pretty much abandoned in the marsh as a young child. She learns to work with the nature for survival. And you just see this complete and utter love of science. And it's not always just referred to as science. It's just her love of nature in general. But that curiosity that's never satiated the way she overcame so many hurdles and struggles and then the plot in the background also was just fascinating. This is one of my favorite books and definitely one that I, when I want to like kind of rekindle that drive, I will read that book because Kaya is just such a strong character and I want to channel her in my own life. So that is my life update. I'm going to still continue to try and get a video out every single week but we shall see it might be slightly delayed sometimes kind of depends on how that thesis is going and how much time i need to devote to that because graduation is slightly higher in the priority list than doing booktube videos if you have any questions about graduate school booktube goodreads bookstagram let me know in the comments down below and i will do my best to answer them all right happy studies happy reading bye